what is going on ladies and gentlemen it is your host with the most Avery LR32 aka Avery Ladder Reigns the man the myth <laughs> the legend who came in 18th place in Kissimmee Orlando Florida with trick stars at a 256 man regional now this is my second regional top and uh, I did not expect to get 18 place with trick stars um, the video I made last night when I was coming home from the regional people were like yo give us the diaper file give us the diaper file I'm like alright it'll be here Sunday so it is finally here I just walked in the door and got back um, this is gonna be quite a long video I'm predicting so sit back and relax I know that you guys want to see the deck so I'm gonna get into that first and I'm gonna get into my matchups at the end however I will say at the beginning of the video what I at least won against and what I won to and what I lost to so uh, it was a nine round event again 256 people came in 18th place round one I played against black wings and I lost he two owed me I opened up really bad there's nothing I really else want to talk about with that. <laughs> uh, round two, I played against some kid with blue eyes. I 2 0 him. I won. Round three, I played against True King Dino. I believe I also 2 0 him. Round four, I went against True King Zoo, and I won that. Round five, I went against Pendulum Magicians, and I won. And then round six, I got my second loss against True Draco. We went to three games. We went into time, and I misplayed and played Solemn Strike on his masterpiece, and it was unaffected by traps, but it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have lost anyway. Um, round 7, I played against Pendulum Magicians again. We went to uh, two games, and I won, so I 2 owed him. Round 8, I went against True Draco. We went to three games, and I beat him because he had uh, 200 life points left, and I, or 400 life points left, and I had a Lyca Riskia on the board, and he tried to Masterpiece Pop 1, and I said, no, 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 it just triggers. Uh, after you search off a diagram, you take 400. We called over a judge, and he said, that's stupid, and he was all salty. Then round 9, I 2 owed Pure Zoo, and I'll be talking about how I beat him at the end of the video, and I'll do that along with my other matchups at the end of the video. But for those of you who just want the deck profile, here it is. So let us go ahead and just dive right into this. Again, I did not expect to do well. I figured once I lost to Black Wings, that was going to be the end of the day. So we are playing three Trickstar Candina. This is your Stratos of the deck. And another thing that was really nice about playing this deck is that a lot of people got caught off guard with my effects, surprisingly. Like, a lot of people were really... Uh, I guess confused about this deck for lack of a better term. Like when I went against Pure Zoo round nine, the guy didn't know how to counter reincarnation. Like he asked me if I could ghost dash, and I told him I can't tell you until you actually play the card because that's technically coaching. I was pretty sure that you could, and then when he did actually use ghost dash, um, he read the card of course before he played. And he said yes, I can ghost dash, and he was correct. Um, under the pressure and adrenaline and all that. Of course, I can't remember every ruling off the top of my head. But people forgot that this hits spells and traps. And what he does is that uh, you can search any trick star card from your deck, add it to your hand. Whenever you activate a spell or trap, you take 200 points of damage. The opponent does, of course. So the opponent activates a barrage. They take 200 plus light stage on the board, deals an extra 200. So one guy played barrage, and uh, I go, okay, you take another 400. He goes, F, I forgot. <laughs> so that was uh, that was rather funny. Then we are playing three like a Riskia. This is the one that everybody hates. This one can be special summoned from the hand by bouncing a trick star from your field to your hand except yourself. And then every time you add a card, whether it's from the extra deck to your hand, graveyard to your hand, deck to your hand, even if you're destroying for turn, you take 200 points of damage. So combos very well as well with trick star Lily Bell, which is how I won game two round nine against the pure zoo guy. Um, she has a 2000 ass, which is nice, 800 attack, but with trick star light stage doing an extra 200 damage whenever you take damage from a trick star monster's uh, attack or effect damage it deals an extra 200 so you're basically doing a thousand with her with light stage so so good the the fact that you can go like candina add lily bell special summon lily bell battle phase poke for 800 light stage is another 200 like a risky a bounce summon like a risky a play out lily bell do another 1000 plus you have a 1600 beat stick is so 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 good i'll be talking about that at the end of the video and then we're playing too honest they're common don't hate me <laughs> then for the hand traps we were playing a crap ton and they all came in handy the one of maxi Two Ghost Ogre, two Ghost Ash, and of course the three obligatory Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird was not only uh, came not only came in handy for the fact that I Droll and Locked people three times with the reincarnation combo, but it also came in handy for like whenever I didn't have the combo, someone would go like diagram search and I would just Droll and Lock them and their turn would pretty much be over. And um, Ghost Ash was Ghost Ash, it did what it needed to do. Maxi got in there once against the second Pendulum Magician guy I played. He let me draw like six or seven cards, and Ghost Ogre was just Ghost Ogre. It did what it needed to do. 
So that's it for the monsters. Uh, you really don't play any other trick stars. That's all the trick stars. That's pretty much all that's available right now, I think, anyway. And then we were playing three light stage. People were so pissed that this was not once per turn. One of the guys I played against, uh, the true Draco guy that I lost to, was like, damn, why can't this thing be once per turn? It's so busted. Now, unlike Candina, it only allows you to add trick star monsters whenever it's activated. And then what it does is, while it's face up on the field, every time that a trick star monster inflicts battle damage or you take effect damage from a trick star monster's effect, it deals an extra 200 points of damage. And it also has a Zing Zang Hu effect where I can target one face down spell or trap on your side of the field and freeze it. And then at the end phase, you either activate it or send it to the graveyard. Now, the way that I thought that this was originally ruled was that, let's say at your end phase, I, I froze one of your face downs and it was, say, a Dark Hole or a Raigeki, a normal spell card. I thought it was ruled that you could activate that Dark Hole at the end phase and blow away my board. You actually cannot. The only things that you can activate when Trickstar Light Sage freezes something, at the end phase you either send it to the graveyard or activate it. You can only activate cards such as, you know, Skill Drain or normal trap cards that have met their activation requirements. Um, Book of Moon. You can only activate, like, quick play spells if I freeze a spell. So, like, you could activate an MST at the end phase. Uh, if I froze it with Light Sage, you can activate Twin Twisters, but you can't activate something like Dark Hole, Raigeki, um, things like that. So you couldn't activate a Rota and search at my end phase. That, that'd be really, really bad. Um, so, yeah. And then 3 Terraforming. It's Terraforming. 3 Chain Summoning. Uh, this card's so busted. Um, the fact that y you just go Candina... Um, if they don't chain anything, you just chain like a risky and chain chain summoning. It seems very inconsistent, um, but it's more inconsistent in the Dark Room and Nightmare Disturbance strategy builds, because uh, this is obviously not one of those builds. Um, this card came in so clutch. I was originally playing two. I bumped it up to three. Oh my god, this was so good. And uh, I actually sided these out a lot, um, sometimes game two, sometimes game three. Uh, but we'll get into the side deck in a minute, because I actually did side those out for board wipes, which came in very good handy. Then I'm playing two pot of duality. I think that this is where my build kind of strays away from other builds, because I've seen a lot of trick star builds, especially the Dark Room and Nightmare, basically OTK centric based builds, as I call them, playing pot of desires instead of duality. Now, desires is a good card. The problem is that this that this whole trick star burn deck is more focused on burning the opponent, yes, but not solely relying on that. You know, you play the Dark Room and Nightmare um, Disturbance Strategy present card builds, they're going to be playing Desires because you want to get your resources ASAP, whereas Duality, you have the choice of one of three cards. Now, I will admit it kind of sucked when I would go like Candina, add like a Riskia, play Duality, because then I would have to wait till after my opponent drew, but I mean, I'm missing out on 400 points of damage, I'm going to burn you anyway. So, it still definitely came in handy. I, I sided this out along with my three Chain Summonings to side in two Twin Twisters, two Dark Holes, and a Raigeki. That was all I ever used for my side deck. And it, it actually worked out very well, because round nine against Zoo, he wasn't expecting board wipes, and I won because I had a dark hole. Uh, and then the, these should have been Cosmic Cyclones. They got lost in the mail, unfortunately, but MST still got the job done. Actually, it was kind of helpful, uh, better than Cosmic Cyclone, in my opinion, because I didn't have to pay a 1,000 life. And then for the traps, we have the MVP Reincarnation. If you're not playing three, I don't know what you're doing. This card's busted. Um, one of my friends who's actually playing uh, Trickstar, he's playing the main burn-centric build that I was just talking about. And he didn't realize that um, he was misplaying with the deck. Um, he thought the Droll and Lockbird combo worked one way, and I explained it to him that it doesn't work that way. Um, essentially, the way that the Droll and Lockbird combo works, for those of you who don't know, uh, let's say that you have two Trickstar reincarnations. You let the opponent draw for turn, and then they enter standby phase. In their standby phase, you activate the first reincarnation. They're going to banish their six-card hand and draw another six cards. After this reincarnation resolves, you now have the second reincarnation still in their standby phase, or you can let them go to main phase, whichever. Once they enter that phase, you activate Droll and Lockbird from your hand, and you chain the reincarnation. The chain resolves backwards because Droll and Lockbird's already active. The opponent's going to banish their whole hand, and they won't get to draw because Droll and Lockbird says drawing cards also counts as adding. So, very, very nice. Now, I don't have three Blazing, but I wouldn't really play three anyway. Two Blazing and one Storming. Um, storming came in clutch, especially against Zoo. Um... I was able to bounce away his hand. I used this against True Draco, and he's like, that works for me, because then he could just tribute his shit again, but it didn't really matter. Blazing put in work against a Psyframe Lord Omega. The opponent didn't banish it. I went Blazing, and we both took 1,400, and I was able to win from there. Um, so if you have three Blazing, go ahead and play three if you want. I kind of like playing two and one, because um, Quaking is just bad now with Link Monsters. So I really liked that that lineup. Then I'm playing two Strike, one Warning, and one Ring of Destruction. Ring of Destruction, I got off once? 
and we both took damage. And then the second time I tried to use it, I was I was going against a true Draco Wind Witch guy. Round, I believe that was round eight. Yes, it was round eight. It was a true Draco Wind Witch build. He played out the the first synchro before you make Crystal Wing, the one that does eight hundred. And I activated Ring Destruction to pop it, and he chained the effects. So I'd still take eight or. Yes, I, he chained the effects. So I would still take 800, but then he chained the Ghost Ogres so that he wouldn't take the damage. So, that is it for the main deck. Let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck. I only used a couple cards from the extra deck. Um, we're playing one Firewall Dragon. I never used it. I just had it in here just in case. I could have made it. I just never used it. Um, let me see that right there. One Tropical Logic Bomber Dragon, <laughs> as I like to call it. Uh, never made it. Holly Angel, I made like I think twice. Kind of came in handy, um, especially for when I was playing against True Drake when he had the 2400 Dynamite on the board. This was able to give it to 26, and the fact that it protects your Trick Stars from being destroyed by battle or by card effects is really nice. And every time you know more special summon one to a zone that it points to, they take an extra 200. So you combine that with Light Stage, that's another 400. Then I'm playing Triple Deco Talker because I had nothing else for the extra deck. Uh, one Black Rose, one Omega, one Trishula, which again, I never made. I never made the Deco Talkers as well. I wish I would have had some. Uh, uh, level 6 synchros in here because there was a point where I had a like a risky on the board and a ghost ogre in my hand. Of course, 3 plus 3 is 6. I could have made a level 6 or I could have made a rank 3, so I wish I would have had Nightmare Shark for the extra deck as well. One Tsukiyomi never made, never made Samurai, never made Castell, never made Giant Hand, never made Cowboy, never made Abyss Dweller. If you have Nightmare Shark, throw in Nightmare Sharks. It's very, very good in this deck. It's basically a Heartland Draco, but it's rank 3, so. In that moment where I had the Ghost Ogre and the Lyco, I could have summoned out Ghost Ogre, overlaid into the Nightmare Shark, and then used the effect to detach and then swing directly for 2,000. So if you have Nightmare Sharks, definitely play Nightmare Sharks. Uh, and then, of course, we got our beautiful tokens, because tokens are bay. Uh, for the side deck, we're playing Double Thunder King and Ghost Ogre. I never use these at all. I just like having the third Ghost Ogre in case one of my hand traps wasn't all that good. Then we are playing one Regeki, Double Dark Hole, and Triple Twin Twister. Let's see if I can get all that in the view probably not <laughs> but triple twin twister i only side decked in two um again my side deck really was only ever these four cards or these five cards excuse me the two dark hole the two twin twister and the red geki against the zoo guy round nine i took out my three chain summonings and my two dualities side decked in these five i opened up a dark hole um and at my main phase he act or during my standby he activated anti-spell so he had a Barrage face-up, an Anti-Spell face-up, and a face-down card, which turned out to be Mirror Force. I'm sitting with a Dark Hole, a Terraforming, and a Light Stage. I set everything, make a play, and then he goes off, makes his play. He has two Dridents, Mystius Radiant, Hammer Kong, and Ram Ram on the field. I draw for turn into like a Lyco Riskia. I activate Dark Hole, and he goes, that really hurt. And then at the end of the match, he told me that he side-decked out his two My Bodies. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. I literally like moved back in my seat and was like just hoping and praying to God that it went through. <laughs> so then we have three scapegoat because I wanted to make a firewall dragon, but it never happened. And then three present card in case I wanted to burn my opponent quicker, which again, it never came up. So that is the entire deck, you guys. Um, for those of you who just wanted to see the deck, I thank you guys so much for watching. Um, to get into my matchups, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, like I said, round one, I played against Blackwing. Um, I opened up really bad both games, and he was just able to beat me. I ran out of resources. There was nothing I could do. Round uh, Game one, I activated Terraforming to add Light Stage. I played Light Stage, and he had the Ash Blossom for it, and my Light Stage got Ash Blossomed like twice, but the second time it happened, I was able to bait it out. <laughs> And so game two, he just beat me. I opened up shit. And then I ended up winning four games in a row. Nothing too special, really. I mean, like I said, I, I beat a Blue-Eyes Kid round two. I two-owed him. Round three was True King Dino. two-owed him. Round four, True King Zoo. I think we went to three games, and I won. Round five was Pendulum Magicians. I two-owed him, uh, which was actually a lot easier than my second Pendulum Magician matchup. Um, and then True Draco round six, like I said, I lost two. Um, I just really couldn't do anything. Uh, he was just kind of able to keep the advantage going. You know, people said that Masterpiece kills this deck. Um, but, I mean, if you play your cards right and you can just kind of get around it, then you're good to go. Also, I was using these sleeves just to kind of troll. And these are actually really nice sleeves, so I think people kind of thought I was a scrub for playing these sleeves, but it was just funny. Um, and then round seven, I played against Pendulum Magician. He went off game one, destroyed me. He was actually really pissed because I said... 
uh, we were talking, whatever, and I went terraforming. He goes, yeah, a lot of people have been playing terraforming on me today. And then I go, search light stage, activate light stage. He goes, mother effer. <laughs> he was so pissed. He's like, sorry, now I have to act like a prissy bitch this match. So it was just, it, it was funny. People hated this deck. Um, and then round eight, I went against True Draco. Now, what I was talking about with him being at 400 life points, I had two Lyco Riskias on the board. And he had a diagram on board with, like, I think a dynamite. And he goes, diagram effect, pop a card, search. And he searches for, like, some trap or something. And I go, okay, that resolves, that's game. He goes, masterpiece effect. Or, yeah, he had masterpiece. It wasn't dynamite, excuse me. He goes, masterpiece effect, banish, pop one, so I still live. I go, no, they just trigger. And that's what's nice about these trick stars. Because not only does Lyco Riskia a trigger effect, so is Candina, and so is Light Stage. Whenever you activate a spell or trap, Candina triggers and you take the damage. Light Stage triggers because you took damage from this and it's another 200. They don't actually activate or start chains. And that's why I don't feel like the guy was trying to te cheat me, but I feel like that's what he was trying to get around. Um, which do it doesn't work like that. And we called a judge over and he said, yes, you have two Lyco Riskies on the board. You add to hand, you add to hand at resolution off of the diagram. When that resolves, these trigger because the game state now recognizes that you added a card to your hand and you take the 400 damage. And that was in game two. And he's like, that's stupid. And he just picks up his card or all of his cards and whatever. And he tried to say like, man, you seem kind of in a rush, man. And that's kind of disrespectful. I'm like, dude, I'm tired because I like quickly called a judge over to, to like take the match slip. And he told me just to take it and whatever. But he's like, this seems kind of disrespectful. He had like a smile on his face. I'm like, dude, I just beat your ass. Like, get out of here. <laughs> so... Yeah, people were salty, and I understand that. I even apologized to my opponents. I said, I'm sorry I'm playing this deck. And he said, nah, man, it's a good deck. You're good. Everyone I played was super, super chill. Um, but then round nine, uh, before I leave y'all here, round nine against the pure zoo guy. Uh, like I said, I drew into a Lyco Riskia. I have a terraforming and a dark hole set and a light stage set in my spell and trap zone, because, again, he played anti-spell uh, turn one. I go uh, draw for turn into Lyco Riskia, activate dark hole. He's like, that really hurt. It blows away his board. I go terraforming, add the light stage. I flip over light stage, use the effect to search for the amazing, incredible, busted ass. Um, did I add Lily Bell? Yeah. Uh, no, I added Lyco Riskia. Yeah, I added another Lyco Riskia to my hand. For whatever reason. Oh, because I want to be sure I had game. Because I drew into a Lyco Riskia, so I added a second copy of Lyco Riskia to my hand. I normal summon Candina. Activate the effect of Lily Bell in order to in order to uh, special summon. So Candina adds me Lily Bell. It was added to my hand. I get a special summon. So this is my board. He has no board. And I have a light stage face up. So I go battle phase, uh, poke for 800. And I already had a Lyco Risky on the field at this point because I use reincarnation to get it back uh, from my grave. Um, and I go Lily Bell attack. You take a thousand attack, attack with the other two. Effect of Lyco Risky on hand. Special summon. Bounce Lily Bell. Effect of Lily Bell since I added it to my hand. Special summon again. Attack with my last two monsters. That's game. So uh, a combination of reincarnation and Candina and Light Stage all help me win that game along with the Dark Hole, obviously. Um, because he tried to use Mystic Radiant to add something from his grave to his hand, so I chained Reincarnation to target Lyco, and then he chained uh, Zodiac Combo so that he would draw a card and not take damage. I got out the Lyco Risky, and he put a Dryden back in his extra deck, and I proceeded to win that turn. So thank you guys for watching this super long-ass deck profile. Um, I really hope that this gets posted on other Yugi YouTubers' channels, because I really want this to blow up. This was the first regional of the entire regional season, so uh, there was no other regionals uh, like going on around the world. So I'm technically the first person to top with Trick Stars, which is really freaking cool. I'm not trying to sound like I have a big ego. I'm just really proud of myself for topping with the deck. So thank you guys for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed, I really ask that you guys subscribe. Shout outs go to all of my already subscribers because you're all the real MVP. Thank you all for the support. Thank you all for congratulating me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.